Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Pro Wrestling Logic YouTube channel and the AEW Dark, Special Friday Dark edition for the 6th of November. Can't believe we are literally less than two months away from the end of the year. Uh, for 2020, um, I will be back with the Full Gear review after the show. I also will have a SmackDown uh, review from last night up within the hour or so. That's that, and um, I'm about four months, five months into 1991 Superstars of Wrestling. So lots of good content coming up in the next few days. Please like, subscribe, comment below if that's your thing. Anyway, um, the dark show is what a dark show, show should be here. About seven or eight matches. All of them were passable to decent, uh, but anyway. Uh, Big Swole defeats Tasha Price. Uh, Price is making her debut here with the company. She did all right. Uh, she has been in Shimmer and Shine. She's a talented young lady, and she did appear in NXT a few times. The story of the match, basically, is that Price could hang with Swole as a wrestler. Uh, Swole did have better striking and ground-and-pound approaches, uh, she hits a liger, uh, a lariat, and a tiger bomb before uh, getting a clover, cloverleaf submission to Swall. I'm not opposed to this. I think they do need to add more women. I think they need to focus in on half a dozen to eight women in the division getting pushed and scrap a lot of the rest. I don't know, even though that they have half a dozen women that are at the level, so you got to keep looking, got to keep trying, and I get that. Uh, Matt Seidel defeats Chris Daniels. Good match here. Daniels and Kazarian... Uh, are feuding with TH2, the Hybrid 2, um, which is a waste of both talents, in my opinion. Uh, Seidel, again, another guy that, being that he's been on a larger stage, should be featured more. Um, he is doing well with technical wrestling. Um, both guys are pretty even going into the early stages, or through the early stages. Seidel uses a jump kick and a corkscrew moonsault for near fall. Daniels makes a comeback after an exploder. Hits the STO and a blue thunder bomb. The power bombs seem to be the move of the day, it appears here. For near fall, applying the Koji clutch, Seidel gets to the ropes. Seidel hit a jumping Frankensteiner and follows up with a sidewalk driver. And uh, Daniels cuts him off with a Uranagi. TH2 comes out and distracts Daniels, uh, buying Seidel enough time to uh, counter the angle wing, angle, Angel's wings. Easy for me to say, into a win for himself. I mean, at least he won, but I, again, Chris Daniels at almost 50 years old is so much better than, than being thrown into something with the hybrid, too. Um... And maybe if they, if, to be fair, maybe if they explained the gimmick better, I'd at least understand it or get behind it. I don't think Angelico's too bad. I've never been a Jack Evans guy. But if they gave me something more with the characters, I might give it a pass. But at this point, I think it's a waste of Kazarian and Daniels. Uh, speaking of waste, Brandon Cutler and Michael Nakazawa up next. Uh, Nakazawa, a friend to Kenny Omega, which I assume is the only reason he has a job. I don't see anything in the guy at all, and it doesn't make any sense to me. Cutler uh, did get his first win on the last Dark Show. Nakazawa uh, tosses away his oil before the bell, um, and then Cutler hits a reverse DDT for near fall. Um, gets cut off when trying to dive. Uh, Nakazawa hits a axe handle on the outside, drives Cutler into the barricade, and then the referee starts to count, grabs on the ropes due to the oil. Nakazawa didn't have time to oil them up. Cutler makes his way in, trade strikes. Nakazawa hits a spear for near fall, tries to grab the ropes to break his way out. Of Cutler's finisher, couldn't get a grip, um, and then Cutler gets another win. Maybe this will go on to a win streak. Maybe they'll do something with Cutler since they have him around. Who knows? Could have done without the match, but it's fine. Um, 
so Frankie Kazarian's interviewed backstage by Dasha Gonzalez. Uh, she asked Kazarian's goals in AEW. He um, basically apologizes uh, to for not being on top. He should be on top of the AEW food chain. He's uh, not on posters, press releases. His job is to wrestle. He's got a chip on his shoulder. Um, I mean, fine enough promo as long as it's going somewhere. I hope they don't drop it. Griff Garrison actually wins a match here. Good thing. Against Ariel Dominguez. Um, Dominguez makes his uh, AEW debut. A guy that's actually, I think, smaller than Marco Stunt. If not, they're very, very close. I know they could tag and be called fun size. At least then there'd be a use for them. Um, I, I did not like this match at all. Garrison gets a singles victory here. Dominguez um, is, like I said, about the size of Marco Stunt. And I'm not a fan of wrestlers being that small unless they're sideshow attractions. I do think they have a place. Um, I, I'm all for the return of little people if you want to do that. But I don't think it's credible when a guy, the, these guys' size, Stunt and Dominguez, uh, are in the ring for competitive matches with larger individuals. Uh, Dominguez tries to strike. Garrison hits a backdrop and a big boot. Garrison uh, hits a splash in the corner, catches Dominguez on a dive. Uh, Dominguez into a power bomb or gets put into a power bomb for the win. Good win for Garrison. Hope they go somewhere with it. Lance Archer and Jake Roberts come out. Roberts uh, basically begs Garrison to leave for his own good. Archer gets in uh, and beats up Garrison for not leaving. Archer boots him and lariats him and hits a fall away slam on Dominguez. Robert said that Archer wants one more shot at the, at the championship. No matter who wins at full gear, Archer will get the next shot. Archer said that nobody can stop his path of destruction. He believes John Moxley and Eddie Kingston are worried about him. And if Kingston wins, Archer will take out every single member of the family, including the bunny, as he gets what he wants. Eh. I'm not an Archer fan. I think he's much better in New Japan. I think he's a guy who needs the monster aura to be over. So when you're not going to put him in a championship role, which I don't see them doing over over Moxley, um, he kind of gets lost in the shuffle, and I think that's what's happened here. Um, anyway, um, Dark Order, Stu Grayson, and Evil Uno, why are they still employed? Defeats uh, Sean Maluda and Ryzen. Uh, Grayson comes out with a clothesline on Maluda. Uno tags in, uh, Ryzen tags in, Uno regains an advantage with the good old Greco-Roman eye rake, uh, driving into the apron, Ryzen gets beat down with double teams, Maluda gets a hot tag, uh, Grayson sends Ryzen into the barricade, Uno cuts Maluda off with a lifting flatliner for the win. This, uh, no one has been able to sell me, not even my friends in the sport has been able to sell me on the Stu Grayson and Evil Uno. To me, they are the epitome of video game characters that people emulate and from like an 80s video game um, and then they turn themselves into wrestlers. It makes no sense. Anyway, Ricky Starks defeats Trevor Reed. Starks basically hits a bunch of strikes early, dropkick Reed out of the ring, uh, brings him back in with a vertical suplex, spear and Rochambeau, quick win. I love Ricky Starks. I would love to see Ricky Starks as television champion at some point sooner rather than later. Uh, glad to see him here. Chuck Taylor with Trent. And Orange Cassidy defeat Lee Johnson. Um, this is a rare singles match for Chuck Taylor. Uh, Johnson joined the Nightmare family earlier in the week, which they covered. Um, 
match um it was fine um basic early stuff technical wrestling early taylor has a power advantage johnson you could say has the speed johnson hits a drop kick and uh sends a double thumbs up taunt to cassidy uh taylor hits him with a big boot taylor beat johnson with repeated moves that are based in power johnson gets out of the way of a moonsault he um gets hit with soul food and then he hits a blue thunder bomb that's like the fourth one in a seven match show um taylor hit a pop-up sit-up power bomb decent near fall and then hits a falcon arrow for another two count he hits a diving foot stomp for yet like a fourth near fall um johnson hits a gamagiri and a and a top and a tope dive over the top um so uh back in the ring taylor hits a stuff foul driver but johnson kicks out yet again uh taylor hits the awful waffle which is a finish i hate giving the victory to taylor um i'm glad for lee johnson that he's getting closer to winning i don't think that going toe-to-toe with a guy who main evented Dynamite less than two months ago in a very brutal match is the way to do it. There are other talents he could have gone 50-50 with. There are other talents that Lee Johnson could have gone 70-30 with. I don't think Taylor was the right talent for that. Furthermore, I don't necessarily understand the logic of taking a tag guy, putting him in a single, and making him look that competitive with a guy who hasn't won a match maybe if lee johnson had won four or five matches and he's at least shown he can win you can do that but where they did it here doesn't make any sense whatsoever anyway uh we'll be back as i mentioned with the full gear review and other things till then keep your feet on the ground your mind in the moment